10 years ago, Hurricane Katrina made tragic history as America's costliest disaster. Costly in terms of human lives, all the destruction, and of course the impact on the lives of the survivors. Well, that's why any good news silver lining story is always welcome. Like the one you're about to discover about a couple who headed north after the storm to find their big dream on the banks of a little Tennessee River. I had just bought a new house five days before Hurricane Katrina. It flooded, the house I was selling flooded, my mother's house flooded, my rental property flooded. Randy had just bought a new condominium on the beach six weeks before Katrina. He came back that day and it was just gone. The whole building was gone down to the slab. After Hurricane Katrina, Randy and Elizabeth Landry left New Orleans in search of a new home. A search that eventually led to Columbia, Tennessee. And this important question. What do we do in Tennessee now that we're here? It was either going to be hot rods and full muscle cars and collector cars full time or a restaurant. And then of all things, this building popped up for sale. The land research for a location for their restaurant led them here to the Duck River. Nice view for the customers, of course. And the building itself, well, it's a 215 year old structure with a lot of history before becoming a destination for fine dining. In fact, it was a restaurant called the Lamplighter Inn from 1961 until just before the Landry's found it, bought it, and renamed it River Terrace. The original logs and stone fireplace were in sound shape, but much of the place needed help. Fortunately, in addition to Creole cooking, Randy is handy with construction work. When you saw this place, did you see the potential? It took some looking. <laughs> it took a lot of looking. Um, it, it was better in some ways than we thought, worse in other ways than we thought. But by this time, Randy and I had renovated five properties together. And you know, if you can go through a renovation together, you can get through pretty much anything together. Randy's also an expert welder. These are metal sculptures he made for the foyer and bar area. Just some of the many changes he envisioned for the place. If you want big results, make big changes. So we did, we changed the name. It used to be red outside, looked like a barbecue place. And that's a log building, you can only make it look so formal, but we tried to dude it up, wrought iron work to make it look like part of a New Orleans nostalgic area to fulfill the vision I had. And then we wanted to be more intimate in here where you're not on top of everybody, the tables are further apart, we have the soft services so people can enjoy the conversation. Just something that I had, I try and make the customers feel different than anywhere else they go to. Elizabeth has a day job running her own internet based business and a night job running the bar. Work my way through college, bartending and cocktailing and waitressing, things like that. Always wanted to have a restaurant. And always wanted to be the bartender? Not really. <laughs> Not really, but it had been 30 years since I had done that. And, um, but I ended up picking it up like that. It was shocking to me. Our specialty is our crawfish and shrimp at the we make it with a combination of crawfish and shrimp, because crawfish can be a little bold, a little gamey, a little aggressive. The shrimp just kind of smooth it out and make it a little more mellow. So we do that, but you can have it with all crawfish or all shrimp. And on request, we can do chicken etouffee, so people can't have seafood. It's a nice cream sauce. The word etouffee is a French word. It means to smother. So it's actually a topping, ah. like a gravy. Steak shares some of the menu marquee, along with other fish offerings. And Randy, well, he's the creative culinary mastermind behind it all. I always think of my food as like a piece of art. You know, when I get it out there, I try and look when it's slid in front of a customer to see what he sees and what his, what his expectations are. It's for me to meet them. And when we do, they look at it and you wouldn't believe how many people take pictures of their food before they eat it. And if they post it, they'll go on Facebook and make a comment or they'll go on TripAdvisor and not only do they have a comment, they'll have a picture of the food. There's one item on the menu the Landry's didn't plan on. It was a customer favorite when the previous owners were here, so it's bagged by popular demand. It is a southern delicacy called rooster fries. After battering and deep frying for a few minutes, time for a taste test. Okay, here goes. Your first time? <laughs> rooster fries, River Terrace style. You'll be beating on my door every night looking for these now. <laughs> we'll see. It's pretty good. No, not what you thought. You thought no. it would be real gamey. Mm -hmm. It's acting like a delicate, creamy piece of chicken. Of course, it's the more traditional dishes that bring in the most customers. 
made with fresh ingredients from scratch. You know, you can tell the difference when somebody makes something from scratch when you order it versus pulling it out of the freezer and microwaving it and throwing it on a grill for a minute. You know, that doesn't happen here. Randy is still into classic cars. On our visit, he had two from his collection parked outside. However, his principal passion is River Terrace and ensuring it offers the best authentic New Orleans cuisine outside of the Crescent City itself. You don't come back because of the river view. You don't come back because of the carpet or whatever. You come back because of the food. And I always never deviate from that. I always make sure the food is my focus. Glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad y'all came in. Nice seeing you.